Now the question is, can this guy, who can't wrap a wrap, can he enjoy boat life? Right, James. Some of the stuff about boat life is not actually about driving a boat. No? No, some of it is uh, about tasks. And uh, one of the tasks is uh, making sure that the toilet is perfectly serviced. You say empty the toilet. I'm not going to say empty the toilet, but... Because <laughs> uh, we're on the canal, so we can't empty it right now. But what we do have to do, we have to make sure there's a uh, refresh in there. Oh. Yes. For flushing, etc. So, bowel so here, cleaner. Is this for me or for the it, toilet? It's, it's bowl, oh, not bowel. bowel. Close enough. Yeah, well, right. So that, that's my empty that I use for purely just um, mixing because the other one. It's concentrated. It's concentrated. It's the equivalent of 1.5 litres. So basically, what's left in there. Chuck it all in there and they'll fill it with water, basically. Okay, and then what? Yeah. To the uh, toilet. To the bathroom. Now, okay. this bit here. How much? All of it? Yep, chuck all of it in. So this is the equivalent of your um, flush? Sort of like a flush, yeah. But yeah. it's it's not really it's a, a chemical flush, isn't it? It's not really a flush as such. It's more of a, a refresher. Because um, most of the actual um, like waste from your body um, will go down without needing a flush. Right. Because of the design of the toilet. So it doesn't actually have an electric flush? No, no, no. This no. is like a, it's a pump. Okay. On, the, on a cassette toilet. Generally. James, guess what? What? We have another job. Is it underneath here? It is underneath here, and that's why I just come here. So underneath here, there is a uh, there's a filter, um, and it's for the shower pump. So okay. the shower pump for the um, essentially for the sewage of the shower pump. You situated um, the... or the drainage? Yeah. The um, every so often, things like hairs etc. get stuck. Yeah. Um, so underneath here, it's actually underneath the second second one. Well, I see, here it is. You have a lot of storage done there. Yep. Um, there is a bit that you can twist that is like. I wish you could see the screen right now. Um, twist. Ah, oh, yes, this bit. What about this bit here? Uh, that's the one. Yeah, yep. so twist it. It twisting off. Twist it which way? Uh, well, lefty loosey, righty tighty, isn't it? That's uh, that's the floor. Oh, bad, yeah. Um, um, yeah, let's go. Bad, it's not smell of vision, YouTube. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> that is uh, that needs cleaning out. So essentially, you've just got to pull that bit out. Right, just empty it in the sink or in the water outside? Uh, no, so the, the hair and stuff like that needs to go in the bin. So um, if in that drawer, this one here. Yeah. Uh, there should be, uh, yeah, there's a screwdriver. Yep. So you pull the filtery bit out. Where is your bin? Uh, behind you. Oh. You can just scrape it through. There definitely isn't an empty can of beer in there. Wouldn't do anything like that. How often do you have to do this? Um, it depends how much of my hair falls out. 
um, pillow. Most of my hair has fallen out already. Um, but um, it's probably once a month. Okay. Is that good enough? Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. be fine. And then I suppose it just goes back. Yeah, back in... Uh, Really, this isn't much different to what you've got to do in a normal house. Because I've um, got to do this with the ours is connected to the drain. Yeah. The cover. There, your screen is back again. Before it's done up nice and tight. And here we go. So now the uh, shower can actually drain nice and quick. Um, something you haven't ah, seen so that's actually. that's why when I looked in earlier, they had a little bit There's of water There's a bit of water in there, yeah, because it wasn't draining very quick. That's because it was being blocked by the uh, that filter there. Yeah. So essentially now, that should, that'll be nice and quick. Cool. So what are you looking at, James? Well, I've got a bunch of panels up here. I suppose this is controls and I guess yeah. fuses for the boat. So behind behind there is fuses. Right, okay. Um, so if you slightly pull the key and tilt that panel towards you. Tilt it. Come like on. pull it. Like pull it a little bit. Oh, pull it. There you go, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So the fuses, the, the fuse port's all behind. Oh wow, oh wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little bit of glue. Yeah, yeah, glue. just in case something needs, oh actually I'm going to need to use that later for, to fix a guitar. Oh. Anyway. Um, well that's nice storage space again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you've got your fridge, your water pump. Um, so so essentially, water pump and sh S is shower pump. Shower sewage pump, yeah. So right. it's like essentially pumping the, the water out of the shower drain. Plugs um, is the... Is, yeah, like so it's 12 wave. volt plugs. Um, right. I've got 240 volt on the boat, but through a big battery that's in a cupboard over here. Um, but we'll need right. to add Oh, yeah. Um, um, but that's um, but that's separate to um, the actual stuff on here. You've then got tube lights which are not connected. They like, were like these? they were the big ones in the middle of the boat. The these ones here, but um, but actually um, I've never used them because right. they never worked. And Dave said he didn't connect them fully because right. um, the spotlight, the cabin lights, which you just touched there. Um, if you Oh, okay. So they're those ones. Oh, they don't turn them all on. They don't turn them all on. Just no, two. You, so they took them the well. They're just the ones that I've left switched oh, on. Oh, so, so what this is, is a... Is it's a master base, switch. It's the master switch. Yeah. And then you have the individual. So this is kind of like your fuse box in a house. It is, exactly that. So you can turn off upstairs, downstairs via this switch. Yeah. But all the individual rooms are controlled by the individual switch. Oh, Correct. Okay, Correct. Um, and then you've got spotlight... Just which like is a spotlight, but there's only one. Uh, only but yeah, one. it's essentially the one right, right at the front of the boat in case you're uh, in a tunnel. Right. And then cabin heater is the actual central heating system. Central heating. So this is the main fuse. Can you control, is it just on or off? or is It's it... just on and off there, and then on each of the radiators, which I've got one there, and then there's one in the bathroom. Right. Um, they each have their own sort of temperature control on, on those. And then you've just got your engine oil, you've got your volts, you've got yeah. two volts. You've got yeah, two batteries. So you've got, um, if you flick it, flick the, the, the key, yeah. Oh, okay, so that kind you've of... Got, um, you've got your ignition um, battery, so your engine battery. Engine battery. And then you've got your leisure batteries. Right, okay. Um, uh, yeah, and then you've got your water temperature. You've got your water temperature, right. So. Nice, so just basically this is uh, how you control yeah. the boat, really. Nice. Um, obviously, nice. each boat is different. Of course, so yeah, it might be positioned in a different place, but usually, I'm guessing you'll get similar. To the engine. Mm, generally, that's the way generally people will, will do that because um, you kind of want those. Some of those controls you do actually want when you're driving. Um, yeah. Or, or to be able to even see well, when you're driving. Especially the lights. Especially the handy. lights. Like you were saying, also, you might not be driving at night time. You, I remember you talking about it previously that you said you might be driving through a tunnel yeah. or even a long bridge. So, having visibility through a narrow bridge, you'd need to have access. So, you don't want to have to run to the front of a boat, turn the light on, and then run back again. To have exactly. Near your controls is a bit like you would do in a So, car. if you, I mean, it's obviously you've got to kind of assume that. At some point, you'll be driving on your own rather than having someone with you. Yeah, of course. So that's why. 
Makes sense. Brilliant. Works really handy. Right, James, I'm going to start the engine. First thing you want to do, um, if you haven't started it for a while, is you want to put the... Um, think of it like um, when you're starting a car, right? Right. So you don't just... Um, and I'm talking about old school cars, not Starting like, go. you know, it's not, it's not like a, yeah. it's not like an automatic um, or electric or whatever, where you just press a button and everything else happens. You think the old school way, um, you want to give the car a little bit of revs with the clutch on, don't you? Yeah. So to put the clutch on and put some revs, you see there's a button in the middle. There you go. Hold that in. That's it. And then give yourself a bit on there. A yeah. L- yeah. Lovely. Perhaps a tiny bit more. There you go. Perfect. And then you have to come to the key, which is here. Twist it like you normally would? Yeah. Half twist it until the uh, light turns orange. So there's an, there's an um, orange one. There yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you hold it. And that is warming up your glow plugs like you do in a diesel car engine. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, we didn't drive too long ago, but um, so you the the colder the engine is, the longer you need to hold it. Yeah. But then you just twist it even further. Oh no! You so you'd let go a little bit. Ah, uh, let yeah. go. Okay. So make sure you half press it and uh, sorry, half turn it. Reset it. No, don't reset it. Half turn it and then push more rather than letting go and then going again. Okay. So now you've gone full. So look at the lights. Yeah. Yeah. Turn it until that plugs goes orange. There yep. you go. And then hold it for a while. Yeah. And then. And now twist further. There you go. There we go. You good? Just give it a little bit. So that's not. I'm guessing that's not engaging. That's the... essentially holding the clutch down. Right. So there's no propeller movement. Yeah. But there is accelerator. Yeah. There is um, revolutions. Starting it, pressing the accelerator down with the clutch in. Exactly say. like that. So, so we're not in gear. We're deactivating the gear. Exactly. We in boats. You. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have a so you, foot with, clutch like you pre- do in a car. Previously, with, with the boats I've driven, the rule was you do it. But you don't do it forward. You do it backwards. So we pressed it. Okay. You you engaged it in reverse to start the engine. Okay. And then you were reversing it, and then slotting. So that was was that with a with a like a clutch down sort of style. Yeah, clutch or? down. Yeah. So we would have a button very similar. It would be on this side, push the button in. But you'd, we'd, we'd always do it in reverse, not forward. Okay. Cool. But uh, same situation. So. I think it was always so you didn't look because obviously the front. Just in case. Just in case. I think it was just in case thing. But obviously yeah. that engine was considerably more beefier than this one. So if you went forwards, you could, you know. 30 mile an hour up there. Yeah. And then just hang. <laughs> That's it's warm. Then cool. Then we need to uh, untie and untie. Uh, away we go. Should I just try it? Well, I'll do the front, you do the back. sort his rope skills out. How's it looking, James? Okay. Oh, God's sake, why did you... To uh, moor up the boat, James. Have we, I thought we've done. I thought, thought that's what you just did. Nope, nope. 
what we just did there is over there is uh, that's the middle rope and it's just loosely tied against that for now. Do we need to tie up by the end? We need to tie up the ends mate. Right. We need to tie up the ends. And the way we do that in this little compartment here that you just try on. In this one here? Yeah. Yeah. The problem you're gonna have, you won't be able to open that. It's not gonna move yet. Oh actually if you do it like that, yeah well done. Okay. It's a shame. I'm gonna say you'll need to unlock the door but um, oh. um so in here you've got some steaks and different pissing bobs. You need to you've got like a you might want to come top down on this James. You see there you've got like a gap. You want to go in and then be hooked under. That makes sense? Yes. That make a loop. That's not going anywhere. Then we just need to do the same with the front. So before you do anything, find yourself the gap that you want to. So that one. And get in. Down. Yeah. So. Yep. You need to make sure you're in and through, really. Is there another one that's a little bit bigger, perhaps, maybe, or don't worry about the ropes and it. Ah, this one. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. That. So then, leg through. through. So I do. That leg, pull it through. You want to pass it over because the front of the boat's a little bit further away. We then pass that over the top. So you've gone round once. Then you're going to make your figure of eight. Ah. Like so, you, that that would be a figure of eight. Yeah. But when you're going to do it, twist your rope under. Ah. Yeah. So okay. you've twisted it like that. Pull it tight. And then when you do it the other side, twist it under again. Right, now that, one more turn, and make sure it goes under. That is going anywhere. And after a day of learning the ropes, so to speak, we thought, what's the best way to really embrace boat life? Well. Of course, we wandered on down to the pub, didn't we? After waking up with a little bit of a sore head for myself and um, a restless night for James, uh, it was time for breakfast, and then to kind of just discuss and go over, do we think you can actually do it, James? Can you live in a boat? Do you reckon you could do you, reckon you could live on a boat yeah i'd probably get from from the, th the big selling point for me was for your, for your especially your boat is the height you've been in a few others they're considerably shorter by about a foot so even walking through a lot of the door doorways and stuff like that you have to kind of have a duck we well, don't have to do in this one um 
but I would say 40 foot, maybe I was looking as like 57 foot ones that I think would probably be the one that I would personally choose, uh, just for having a little bit more, a little bit more space. Um, but all the the amenities I think are, are perfect. Um, a boat this big or a little bit bigger, I think it's pretty pretty much ideal. Uh, but we're just saying I'll probably get a proper bed or find one with one that's like we don't have to like make up or take down. I know obviously it would take up more space, but um, yeah, I, I think I'm finding the right boat. And I think I'm sold to be honest. With what you. do you think like in terms of the lifestyle of boating? It's a lot, it's would, a lot would slower. Have, yeah, what would it, what would cause you problems? Um, so I'd definitely have to choose a marina, 100%, because of my work, obviously being a photographer and, you know, YouTuber, as it were. I do a lot of stuff with desks. I'd need that extra space. But I'd also need that co- that reassurance that, you know, I've got my car nearby for weddings and stuff like that um, and for clients and stuff. The, the, obviously, my job is very niche, so being a, a, a YouTuber with that does a lot of sitting at a desk and doing tutorials and stuff, I'd need that space to be consistent and obviously usable and multifunctional. Because that's the idea with obviously um, a boating, you have to be clever with your space. You haven't got a lot of it, so you've got to be very efficient. So you'd have to learn, or I would have to learn, how to maybe have my desk as well as a kitchen space at the same time. And it's the same with your bed. It'd have to be, you know, storage underneath or storage above or on the front. But you're seeing a lot of boats have all got clever ways of creating storage or making storage out of very small spaces. Um, but yeah, I definitely think if you are thinking like you're like me and you're seeing house prices being so expensive and you, you've got enough for a deposit but not enough earnings to buy a house, then um, I think a boat is a is a is a good option. But there's definitely some learnings but a lot of the stuff you have to do in a boat you have to do at home like you were cleaning the um the water filter well you have a water filter in your house so you might have to do it more frequently in your in the boat but a lot of the stuff that you have to do in a house you just in a smaller scale on a boat obviously there's a few things that are a little bit different like obviously the toilet but again depending on what toilet you get or depending on what toilet i get or depending on this you know the situation that you're in like, uh, you know, toilets get clogged at home, you've got plumbing, and you just obviously got to do it yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing to take away, is if something breaks, you learn about it. It's like owning an old car. With an old car, there's only a few moving parts, you can fix it yourself. But modern cars are a lot more complicated, and I think that's like it with houses. Buying a boat is like buying an old car, where you can fix it yourself. You're within your means to, you know, decorate yourself take out a section, move something. You could probably do it yourself with not a lot of hassle. Or in a house, especially if it's a rented house, first you can't do it. But also, you know, it takes a lot of work. You've got to learn plastering and stuff like that, where in a boat you don't necessarily have to do that. So, And that's very me. I love being able, I love being handy, learning stuff. And I think a boat would fit with that. And I think that's, you've just got to work out as a, as a homeowner what you would, what you would like. And even like today... Travelling down to the local thing, stopping at a pub and coming back again. Although you can do that in a car, it's a lot more community friendly doing it in a boat. And it's a lot slower. I think that's something to definitely... Uh... But it's nice weather. We've been nice weather and uh, when it's raining, I can imagine it being a slightly different experience. So I'll have to probably... I'm thinking of renting it for a week or renting our boat for a week and uh, trialling it out maybe late August time and seeing how it fits with my lifestyle on a little bit more of a permanent basis. Maybe try and work, maybe film a video on it, as well as hopefully, or maybe not hopefully, the weather's bad to see what it's like when it's uh, when the weather isn't as um, nice as a sunny, sunny today. Uh, what's your favourite bit about being on the boat? And we know it wasn't my snoring last night. It wasn't the snoring, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, uh, two things... Driving the boat is really good fun. Even, yeah, just pooling along nice and slowly. But the biggest thing, which I did expect, but not to the degree, is the community. Everyone says hello. Um, Now, I do live in the countryside, so, you know, when I'm walking my dog, everyone says hello. But I do a lot of work in London and in large towns, and you don't get that. So it's like like the opposite of London, like polar opposite of London. Everyone's super friendly, having conversations with you. It's... um, like we were parking up just recently and the guy 
that's opposite here helped us park up. Like, I, my next door neighbour doesn't do that. So, yeah, it, it, that, it's that kind of, yeah, and a little chat, get to know your neighbours a little bit more. It's like living in the 1950s, almost, with the, 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 the community, and something you don't get, I think, in modern um, estates, especially those new builds. So there you have it. Looks like James could live on a boat, but we'll see. Not sure he's uh, convinced me just yet that he's ready, but he's definitely got the potential. See you in the next one.